Hello, Coaching Evolution, a.k.a. the infamous mob. Give me the hashtag live, hashtag replay to let me know when you're watching this. It's been like a week since I've been on here. Yes, I do need a haircut, but screw it. You have to go live. You have to say, screw it. I look like crap. I need to go get a haircut today, shortly, probably shortly after this video. I'm going to go ahead and do that. But give me the hashtag live, hashtag replay to let me know when you're here. Because this is a very important subject today. This is all about making money while you're pissing people off on your way to the top. And uh, I know a thing or two about that because I'm the infamous Joel. And you know, you know that I know that you know that you know that I know. All right. Let me see who's on here because there's some people on here. You're not saying anything. There's some, there's three eyeballs I see. You're not saying anything. Hashtag live, hashtag replay. Don't forget about that. So let me take you back on a spiritual journey, a physical journey, a metaphysical journey, and a time traveling journey back to the time that I was locked up in prison for those seven years. As a lot of you know, seven years locked up, locked away, uh, the, the, the key thrown away, all that good stuff, all the stuff you hear. So when I was up in state prison, this is what they would do. What a lot of people don't understand or don't know is that they try to do some rehabilitative stuff inside the uh prison establishment there how you doing james how you doing paul what's going on today inside the uh, prison establishment there they try to do some rehabilitative stuff and some of it works some of it doesn't work some of it is honestly if you make it work let's put some of the uh you know responsibility on the shoulders of the inmates there's a lot of it i tried to use for myself and a lot of it i'm better for but here's one of the things that they've done that they used to do they used to always bring in speakers. They used to bring in speakers from the outside. Uh, a lot of these people would be like preachers or uh, community uh, vocalists, you know, outreach people, nonprofit kind of people, authors, all kinds of different people. Author, you would bring in authors, you'd bring in uh, drug rehabilitation people, uh, job career coaches and experts and stuff like that, and really bring them in, really bring them into the auditorium and do speeches. And it was like clockwork. I'd sign up for a lot of these just to see what these outside, you know, volunteers would say. I'd sign up and also because I wanted to be a speaker myself someday. So I wanted to see how they did their little presentations. And it was like clockwork. It was like clockwork. Every single one of these speakers that came in, the reception was exactly the same. Okay. They would be up there doing their speeches and they would talk about, well, you guys, you guys need to stop doing crimes. You guys, this is how you stop doing crime. You have to believe in yourself and go out there and clean yourself up and get a job and get off the drugs and stop, you know, selling drugs and stop, you know, carrying guns and doing all this other stuff. Stop joining gangs, you know, whatever other like speeches and, and, and woo woo and mumbo jumbo stuff they would come up with. You know, the stars and the stripes align. You guys got to be nice people, and that's how you do it. You know, just like flipping a switch. Just like, hey, that's it. You know, you just when you leave here, guys, you're going to be like better fathers and good people, and all you got to do is just believe and be good people, and that's it. But here's the problem with that. Like clockwork, like I said, every single inmate in the audience, the people that were sitting around me, I'll never forget it, every time I'd look to my left, I'd look to my right, and the inmates would always make the same noise. The same noise. You probably know this noise. Psst. That noise right there. The flat tire, I call it. Psst. Now, the question is, why do you think they made that noise? Give me a comment in the comment section below. Answer that question. Why do you think every inmate in the audience made that noise? When these people would come in and preach, these people would come in and say, you can do it. You can be better people. You can get a job. You can clean yourself up. You can get off the streets. You can uh, be a good parent. You can stop doing crimes. Why would they make that flat tire noise? Sounds like good woo-woo stuff, right? Sounds like advice we should follow. So the reason that everyone made the flat tire psss, was because we all knew. And we would all discuss, and sometimes some people would even say out loud, what you know What you know about this? We, we didn't like being preached to by people that were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They were born uh, into a white picket fence family and all nicey, mushy-gushy in like the suburbs and like nothing's going on over there. Went to all the best schools, went to college and graduated. Now your ass is walking up in this prison 
trying to tell these grown men who've had fucked up lives, who've had abusive parents, who had no parents in a lot of cases, who went to the worst schools, who have no job opportunities, who have to sell drugs, who who get into the drug game, get into gangs and get into stuff where they have to carry guns and protect themselves. What do you understand about this life? How do you come in here and tell me and dictate to me how I'm supposed to be? So that was the reception. Right or wrong, that was the reception. You know, let's take opinions out of this because I, I think that's the right advice. I'm not saying they're wrong, but it's very difficult to connect with people when you don't understand them. And that's the key. I, that's the point I want you to take away from this. That's the point I want you to take away with this. Because a lot of you out there, you'll see ads, you'll see webinars, you'll see all this content, you'll watch YouTube, you'll see all these big gurus. These big gurus who spend millions of dollars on advertising, have a giant team, have all this stuff going on, and they'll tell you as the beginner, this is what you need to do. How can you connect with that? You're a beginner. You should be going, Instead, you have to choose a coach who has, I'm now, me personally, I'm now on my second business. I built my first one to six figures by myself, didn't delegate, didn't have a team, didn't didn't even run ads. To me, it's much harder to build a business online from zero to $10,000 than it is from $10,000 to $100,000 and beyond. Because once you gain traction, once you gain momentum, it's just about flipping the switch. The beginning is really hard, dealing with family, dealing with time, dealing with your part-time job or full-time job, dealing with all the stress of figuring out all the technology and figuring out how everything connects, how all the puzzle pieces work, how all the getting the momentum down, getting your first clients, getting all these things. That guru over there who's telling you, you need to do this and you need to do that, they're so far removed from that process. They're so far removed from that, that there's literally nothing you can learn from them. Nothing. And it sounds appealing. It sounds good. It's like, oh, you know, we'll teach you how to run ads and we'll teach you how to do all this. That works for them at their stage. That works for them because they went from 100,000 to 10 million. That's what that's designed for. So keep that in mind when you're out there listening to all these gurus and figuring out what they're doing. A lot of it does not apply to you. If you're just a beginner and you haven't even made your first 10,000 online yet, then you need a a strategy that works for somebody who hasn't made 10,000 online yet. The basics, the fundamentals. You need a coach who's only one step ahead of you. One step ahead of you. You don't need a coach who's 20 steps ahead of you. It's very hard to make that connection. They're going to be teaching you stuff and you're going to go, oh, <laughs> you know, it's, oh, I don't get it. it uh, how does that apply to me? I, it's so much work to do. They're so far ahead of you. Their stuff doesn't work for you where you're at right now. So pay attention to those things. Pay attention to those things. I've never run ads. I've hit six figures. I've never run ads. Never. It's it's a high level skill. It seems great. You know, to a beginner, it's like, man, if you just run ads and like you make all this money, like passive income, ads work at a certain level, like when you're ready for that. Ads don't work in the beginning. If you're not spending like a thousand dollars a day, you're gonna get buried by everybody else. It's hard. I've spent a lot of money on ads. I wasted it all because I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't ready yet. I let a coach talk me into running ads. True story. I let a coach talk me into running ads, said it was a great idea. I spent a lot of money and wasted a lot of money and threw it all away. I got nothing in return. That's not because the strategy doesn't work. It's because I, at my business level, was not there yet. And you have to pay attention to those things. What level are you at? If you haven't made your first 10000 online yet as a coach, because a lot of you are supposed to be coaches in this group, if you're a coach, you haven't made your first 10000 yet, then you are what I call a dreamer. You're in the dreamer stage. You need a dreamer strategy. You need something very simple. You need to just get your first few clients in the door. Once you hit $10,000, you are a founder. You need an entirely different business model, an entirely different strategy. Okay, Those are the ways that you find a coach that you can connect with and what coaches are only a step ahead of you. I'm not there at that seven figure and all that stuff, Mark, nowhere near that. So I can't teach you how to run ads and do all this other, like hiring a massive team. That's them. I'm only one step ahead of most of you. I'm just at the stage where I'm building out funnels and I'm building out courses and that's what I'll teach. But first make your first 10,000 online because a lot of you are not ready for that yet. 
So I'm going to read some of these comments now. And I want to get into my next point after I read some of these comments. Because I see a lot of comments flying in and I feel horrible for not reading them. Check this out. Let's see here. I see James is commenting a ton. James, my guy. Great, there's a dick on the wall. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. <laughs> That's one of those things. You got to get people to stop scrolling because people will see a squirrel or a meme and they're gone. All right, so. And also it ties into the, the real point of what I'm trying to teach today. But let me get into that. Prison is bullshit and sentences are way too long unless you got money. James is the realest guy I've ever met. And I've never even met him. I love him to death. That's exactly what the game is, man. It's all about money. Um, they railroaded me. I was broke. It's actually, it's a blessing and a curse because that experience taught me, hey, I will never not have money again, right? As bad as it was, as bad, I got sentenced and I got destroyed horribly in that courtroom. But I realized, hmm, once I was upstate and I saw people with worse crimes than me coming upstate and they were getting like 24 months, I said, man, what's your secret? I had a good lawyer. Hmm. I realized there was a two-tier system going on, and I will never fall subject to that again. Never going to happen. Um, let's see. I have my third person that I'm mentoring. I bet. I, I I can tell you're a great mentor, James. I wonder what that's like. I'm sure they're really, really happy. James says, I feel you, man. This is great shit because I've been trying to take a bunch of these and only call to action was able to get results for me. It's hard. It's hard. It's 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 that it's that puzzle piece. You know, you're looking for that what coach's program fits with where I am in my coaching business. In my business. You're looking for a business coach to get you to the next level, but what is that next level? A lot of times coaches don't know what that next level is, and then they end up hiring a coach that teaches like millionaires and eight figure earners, like nine figure earners. You're nowhere near that yet. Stay away from that coach. <laughs> you know, it's not that that coach is necessarily bad. It's that they're probably, you know, their system is more for somebody that's ready, ready for that. You're not there yet. You know, start getting your first few clients through the door. Start building out your system. Get your offer in place. Basic stuff like that. If you don't even have the basics down, forget about all that other stuff. So I want to get into this next point here as I point back at the dick on the wall. So... I want to get to this next point here because uh, the name of this, and I honestly forgot what it was called, but it was something about pissing people off while making money, right? Pissing people off on your way to the top from the beginning, from the beginning. And I'm talking about the real beginning when I first thought of this business and I thought of it while I was still in handcuffs. I was still in jail. I turned to my friend Rel, who was one of my original uh, students in my class when I ran the business class in jail. And I, I said to him, I said, you know, I want to continue this when I get out. I want to continue teaching and helping. I love this. You know, and he said to me, he said, what about your past? He said, what about your past? Isn't that going to catch up to you? Aren't people going to judge you? Aren't people, um, you know, citizens and stuff like just regular people with no criminal backgrounds? Aren't they going to look at you and downplay you and say, well, you're a business coach, but you've been to jail and you have all this criminal history and all this stuff. Aren't they going to look down on you and not take you seriously? Aren't you worried about that? And I said, no. I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it part of my brand. I'm going to make it part of my story. I'm not going to hide it because people can just Google that stuff. Right? I, not only have I not been hiding that, but I have not been hiding my personality. And a lot of you know, I go around and I'm just myself. I'm transparent. You know, I'm myself. I'm not like one of these robotic, like... I am, you know, such and such business coach and I do this six figures and blah, 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 blah. And it's just so much robotic crap going on out there. You know, again, that connection. So when I piss people off, when I rub people the wrong way, when I curse like a sailor, when I act like myself, when I point out things I don't like, when I point out things I do like, that actually helps my business and it helps your business. Because a lot of you are so afraid of pressing buttons. You're so afraid of making people upset. But that's not true. It's not true that somehow if you make people upset at you, if you make people mad, if people don't agree with you, that you'll lose business, that you'll lose money. It's not true. What actually happens is that the people that do agree with you, the people whose lives you do want to change, the people who do resonate with your message, they gravitate even closer to you. They want to spend more money with you. So don't worry about the haters, all right? Don't worry about that. 
If you have people hating you, if you have people mad at you, if you have people upset, there's people in this group right now, and I, I haven't kicked you out or anything. I post, I comment, you don't agree with me, you hate me, you put me down. That's fine. I don't get mad at that. That lets me know I'm doing the right thing because the people that I am trying to reach, the people that I do agree with me, they're going to be gravitating closer to me. And it's the same in your business. I don't care what niche you're in, relationships, health, wealth, doesn't matter. You have a message, you have something that you stand on, you have principles, you have values, you have beliefs, stand on them. Be willing to make people mad. Doesn't matter. Because the people that you do attract, they're going to be on your side, they're going to spend even more money with you, they're going to be big fans. And the opposite of that is if you make everybody happy. Oh, well, I believe in um, you should run ads. Oh, yeah, I believe in you should run ads too. Okay. <laughs> what if I did that, right? What if... I believe you should never curse. Uh, I believe you should never curse too. And then I have some people who's like, I believe you should curse. I believe you should curse too. You see what I'm saying? Like your message just gets drowned out. You just sound like a yes man. You just like everything and everyone. And you want everybody to get along and pass out flowers and shit. You know, it's like, it's like you have no brand at that point. You have no brand. You have none. So I want you to take this away from this like long rambling speech and stuff like that. Like, if you are out there marketing, a lot of you out there are marketing, you're taking the time out of your day on social media, trying to get clients doing what you're doing. If you haven't pissed somebody off by noon, you're not marketing right. You're not marketing. Now, you don't have to go as hard as I do. I piss a lot of people off by noon, but piss somebody off. Whatever you're saying, it needs to polarize. Polarize. Don't agree with something and agree with another thing. And stay strong because you're going to find your audience based on the things you believe in and the things you don't believe in. Okay? Very, very importante. I believe that something like this is fucking funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> and if you don't think it's funny, that's fine. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to impress everybody. That's okay. I'm not trying to make everybody happy. That's okay. You're going to find your audience. That's what being infamous is all about. So, hashtag mob. Love you guys once again. I'm the infamous Joel and I'm out.